Hello, this is the last question of the 2017 Oxford Pat. So I've done it again and left one question for the final video, but that's fine. Question 23, we've got an experimental setup consisting of two deep tanks, each of width L. That must be these things here, yeah. Separated by a thin transparent membrane as shown below. The left tank is filled with refractive index M1. Yep, they've marked that. N2, they've marked. The membrane is the same as N1. Okay, right, fair enough. Assume the refractive index is air of air is one. Okay, so we've got N is one up the top here. N2 is less than N1. Right, so that means we're going to move away from the normal when we hit. So we're going to go towards the normal. Oh, I said marks here. And then away from the normal when we hit at this point. But still, let's carry on and see what's going on with this ring. The gold ring is dropped in the right pool near the membrane. It drops straight down. An observer at height H above the left edge of the experimental setup watches the ring drop the dashed line in the figure indicates the ray of the path of the light ray from the ring to the observer okay yeah lengths and angles indicated right this is all fine so far so what's happening at a certain apparent depth okay so the apparent depth is continuing this dotted line on because that's where it looks like you know we're used to seeing things in straight seeing things in straight lines the ring will appear to the observer to stop descending. Will it? OK. Oh, that sounds odd, right? So we have to try and understand what that's going on. At what apparent depth does this happen? Right. So we've got, so this is our apparent depth here. So let's call that A for apparent. So why is it going to appear like it stopped descending? Um. So as it drops down, then we're getting what is happening as we so say it was. So if it was actually at that point. What's happening here? If we're looking. All right. So we're moving. This point is moving, isn't it? So this point here is going to be shifting side to side, depending on where things are. So we're going to be moving. OK. But why is it going to look like. So this angle is going to get, so what happens is it goes further then. So if we if we were, I'm going to try and visualise what's going on here. So we've got the ring at some small depth and we want to see that. So we've got the surface, that's going to be a straight line. It's at that depth. We're going to get that angle, then that angle. That's in order to see it. So when it's here, we're going to have... It's going to, we're going to see it at a different place, but it's going to end up at the same point. OK, so what's happening? This angle is getting this is getting more and more towards the normal. So oh, eventually we're going to get. Yeah, this angle is getting smaller and smaller, which means our angle of incidence on here is getting bigger and bigger. Yes, which means eventually we're going to get our critical angle and then we'll be looking along the membrane so we're just going to see the ring it's not going to be changing angle anymore we're not so the reason it looks like it's falling right it's not very clear from this picture particularly right let's i'll draw that out again so we've got the surface so when the ring's right at the surface our eye here is just looking at the ring then when the ring has got to say here the path to the ring is might be doing something like that. So our eye has shifted down as the ring is dropping. We've dropped down. The apparent depth seems to have gone down only that much when it's actually dropped that much. But at least our eye is swinging along. When we get down to, say, here. So we would have come that way. We're still looking down here. So our, we're still getting our apparent depth increasing even though, again, we've increased by even more. But this angle that we've got here, which is our angle of incidence at the second boundary, at the membrane, this angle is just getting bigger and bigger. At some point, we're going to hit critical angle. 
So rather than it coming into the right hand tank, it's going to go along the membrane and we'll just see the ring moving down. We're just going to continually be able to see it. So we're not going to be sweeping any further along that way. We're going to get some minimum value of W on this picture, which means we're going to get a critical angle here. So we need to find a depth that's going to give us that critical angle. Right. So that's quite a lot to think about then. So at that critical angle, we're going to have the N1 sine theta C is going to be equal to N2, because that's what happens with critical angles. And that is going to be where theta 1 equals 90 degrees minus theta c okay so that means theta c well we could write it as theta c is 90 degrees minus theta one and then put it into here so that's going to be so we've got n1 cos theta one is going to be equal to n2 we can also say from snell's law that at that point we're going to have sine theta zero because we don't need the n because n is one. So sine, sine theta zero is going to be n one sine theta one. Right, that's good. So how are we going to get all of that to help with all of this? We can do well. We can we yeah if we square and add those because we've got an m m1 cos1 and m1 sine1 so let's square everything and add them up we'll get the sine so this is equation one that is equation two so let's do one squared plus two squared that's what we're doing here so we're going to have sine squared theta zero plus n2 squared is going to be equal to n1 squared because we've got cos squared plus sine squared is equal to one Right, how is that helping matters? We haven't done anything with, I haven't got apparent depth in this yet. So I've got nothing with, what haven't I used? I haven't used W, I haven't used L, I haven't used A, I haven't used D. Good Lord. I don't really want to use W because W is moving all the time. W is continually L L's a nice one to use because it's fixed. D is changing, so that isn't great. W is changing, so that's not great. And A is the apparent depth that we want. So we want to really use those. Something to do with A and L. And not W. Uh, oh, I haven't used H either. That's another thing that I haven't used. And H is good because H doesn't change. So these are all our constants, H, L and A. W and D are changing. So what are we going to be able to say with anything on this? Right, H and A. Let's put H. Right, we've got a triangle kicking around there. We've got H and A. We've got L. We've got, that's theta zero as well. So that, yeah, that's going to be good then, isn't it? So we've got tan of theta zero is going to be equal to, so opposite over adjacent. So that is L divided by A plus H. Right. So what are we doing with that tan? I'm not sure I want tan. I well, don't say we're going to have to do Pythagoras and work out what, you know, we might have to do. And then we can get what sine theta zero is. Right, okay, so we've got L, A, H, right, let's draw that diagram out, that triangle out again. So we've got this triangle, we've got L there, the width of the tank. That is little h plus A. That is L theta zero, that's a right angle. So this is going to be the square root of L squared plus h plus a squared so we're saying that sine theta zero is going to be well we actually want sine squared so 
well, anyway, sine theta zero, opposite over hypotenuse. So L, yeah, let's square it. So, and then square that, and then we'll just have L squared plus H plus A squared on the bottom. That is sine squared theta zero. So we can now combine these two things together, which is going to give us the L squared over L squared plus H plus A squared is equal to N1 squared minus N2 squared. E. OK. Not sure what how keen I am on this. That looks horrible, doesn't it? OK, well, yeah, we're trying to work out A. I mean, this will get there. I don't think much of it. So multiplying through, getting rid of the fraction here. So we're going to have L squared M1 squared minus N2 squared plus H plus A squared N1 squared minus N2 squared, which then means, so we want to get the H plus A bit on its own. So we've got to do, let's take the L's off then. So we've got L squared, 1 minus N1 squared plus N2 squared. Then divide by the N1 squared minus N2 squared. That's going to give us H plus A squared. So we now want to square root that. Yeah. And then take the H off. And that is going to be A. So, but we've got a plus or minus there. Does it really matter which one? Well, we can't have minus because if we've got the negative square root of that, then we've got a negative A. So it's going to have to be the positive square root on there. And that's going to be what A is. Right. Okay. That wasn't that bad in terms of the calculation. I thought it was going to be a lot worse than that. Fortunately, we only had one A in it. And that's what made the rearrangement so much easier. The actually conceptually seeing what's going on with that ring sinking down is quite an easy, um, interesting one to think through because it was, I wouldn't have said that was particularly intuitive that that would actually happen, that it, the apparent depth would just stop somewhere. But you can see what's going on here. I mean, we never get this set up having in the real world. So we're not going to be thinking, oh, yeah, I remember when I dropped the ring into a tank next to a membrane next to another tank while I was observing from a height H. So we never would have seen this happen because we don't normally get this second boundary. So it's going to keep on shifting. But, yeah, we're going to have that reduction in W. That actually helped when we got to this point because we could see that W is varying uh, when I went through this picture. And you want to be describing things that are uh, you know, in terms of constants. So that's always the, the key with these. If you can't see where you're going, as I couldn't do, uh, you know, once I've got to this point here with the sine squared theta zero plus N2 squared equals N1 squared, I really didn't know where to go. It was just a case of, well, what constants haven't I used? And that was H and L and obviously A, which is the thing we're trying to work out. So sometimes you just have to, yeah, grope around in the dark a little bit until something prevents it, presents itself. And then you can see we've got that triangle. And if we've got that triangle, then everything starts falling into place again. So, yeah, I really, really like that question because it, it was very difficult. I don't think it was as difficult as that, whatever the crazy numbered one, 18 or whatever it was with the um, with the sound waves. But, yeah, this it is very difficult, but it's something that you can think through maybe a little bit easier than those previous ones. That is fitting for a nine mark final question. Very nice indeed. So that's wrapped up 2017. I'll be back with 2018 very soon.